Hi there! Welcome to Lothos Guitar School and today's lesson is on intervals um, how they are named, labeled, how they are played on the guitar um, I give you popular song examples to remember them and to sing them and uh, to keep track of them and examples of where they appear in our playing, in our chords uh, and so forth. Um, so let's start with the first one. The first one is the prime, which means two of the same notes repeat. First of all, what is an interval? The interval is the distance between two notes and either they're being played one after the other or they are played simultaneously. Both are called intervals. So, and there are 12 different intervals because we have 12 different notes. So let's start. Um, from C to C, that's called a unison or a prime. And that appears when two instruments play the same thing or an instrument a singer. Do, that's the interval of a prime, a unison. Where does it, the unison happen in uh, music like uh, jingle bells? Jingle bells, jingle bells, da 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 da. Yeah, so uh, that's repeated the same note. Do. The second interval is the minor second, going from C to D flat. That's quite a dissonant. So let's listen to it an octave higher. Still a dissonant. But it appears uh, in, in songs and uh, the themes, like for instance the favorite uh, famous Jaws theme is a minor second. song, uh, Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder starts with a minor second. Yeah? Isn't she lovely, isn't she lovely? Um, in our playing uh, there's a nice example of uh, Pat Metheny's song, Bright Size Life, that ends with it kind of a dissonant with that Up an octave. The next interval is the major second from C to D. And where do we have it? Well, when we just sing the major scale. Do, re, mi, do, re, mi, do, re. Um, or in Frère Jacques. Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, always starts with a major second. And where do we have it in a chord? Well, uh, for instance, if you play a D7 chord, there's on top of it, you have the exactly that C to D, the, the flat seven of the chord to the root. And with the other notes together, it doesn't sound as dissonant anymore. Up an octave. The next one is a very consonant interval. That's the minor third. That's the basis of any minor triad. Remember the famous uh, riff from Smoke on the Water? Or uh, if we look 
look at a um, traditional song, Green Sleeves. That's the minor third. The next interval is the major third and um, it sounds as follows. C, E. Well, where do we have it in a song? Uh, remember that Beatles song, Opladi, Oplada. Opladi, Oplada. First is always a major third. Opladi, Oplada. Or, oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints, oh, when the saints go marching in. That's a major third. And of course, we have it in any major chord. Like the C major chord. The first interval there is that major third. Most of the intervals are called minor or major. The fourth and the fifth are called perfect intervals or augmented or diminished. So here is now the perfect fourth from C to F. Where do we have it? Here comes the bride or love me tender and uh, in chords, well, for instance, in the power chord, you have it on the top, always. Like in a uh, song, uh, Tash by ZZ Top. There, the main riff is... It's always this. That's perfect fourths. The next interval is the tritone, is the augmented fourth. And it sounds as follows, from C to F sharp. Also quite a dissonant sound, and that's the type of sound that always wants to resolve. Or That's part of any dominant uh, chord. Um, that's why it's so often used, uh, like in our C7. There's the tritone, F sharp to C. And the funny thing about the tritone is it splits the scale into a half. So from C to F sharp is the same as from F sharp to C. And a song. West Side Story. Maria, Maria. There you have the tritone. It immediately resolves. Now we come to the perfect fourth. C to G. That's in a children's song, very popular. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Yeah, the first interval that we hear there is the fifth, perfect fifth. And uh, where do we have that in our, on our guitar? Well, you play a C power chord. That's the bottom of the C power chord, the fifth, the perfect fifth. The next interval is the minor sixth from C to A flat. Remember, the 
the entertainer. After the first chromatic run you have a minor sixth. And where does it appear in our playing? Oh, favorite country lick. It ends on a minor six. The next interval is the major six, C to A. Where do you have it in song? Well, an old traditional also. My bunny lies over the ocean. My bunny lies... Yeah? There we go. And uh, since we just talked about country licks, the beginning of that country lick is uh, major six. Three major six intervals, one after the other. And then I resolve into a minor six. The next one is a dissonant one again, the minor seventh. Um, it sounds as follows. C to B flat. And that's part in any dominant seventh chord. Yeah? In the C7 we have C, E, B flat, C, and one of the important intervals is this, the flat seven, the minor seven. Um, where do we have it on a song? Uh, it's a little tricky. Uh, that's the, for instance, in the beginning of uh, the singing part of the original Star, Star Trek theme. Da, 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 da. come to the major seventh. C to B. Also very dissonant chord, an interval if you play it just like this, but if you play it in a play it in a major seventh chord it sounds fine, but it has exactly but with all the other notes in it, it's quite nice. Songs uh, where this appears, uh, for instance, it's the Nora Jones song, uh, Don't Know Why, which starts with, I waited till I saw the sun, or the Aha song uh, from the 80s, I think, uh, Take On Me, Take On Me. There you go, the major seventh. And the last interval we learn is the octave, which means the same note played higher. Um, C to C. Like if you know uh, Wes Montgomery's uh, guitar playing, he used a lot in his melody and solo playing. Always octaves. A song, a popular a musical. Somewhere over the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. There you go. These are the intervals. Memorize them because we will always use them. We will use them quite frequently when it comes to constructing chords. It's very helpful to know your intervals and um, if you have uh, fun with it you will learn it better when you sing those intervals. You'll recognize them and um, so uh, practice, enjoy your playing and do it now. Don't wait till tomorrow, do it now. See you next time at Lothar's Guitar School 
and uh, this was a lesson on intervals.